Project Restore came from the Office of Minority Health as a grant that was offered in light of the Mike Brown and the situations between community and policing. The grant was a $1.7 million grant and one of our huge partners was St. Louis County Police Athletic League, the three schools that we work with, which was University City, Hazelwood, and Normandy. We wanted to be able to increase grade point averages to increase attendance. Some of the services that Project Restore provided was tutoring through the St. Louis County Police Athletic League. Uh, they were able to get assistance with tutoring from um, University of Missouri St. Louis college students. Another thing that was offered through Project Restore was the restorative justice trainings and practices. With the restorative classes, that's a class where students are able to come in and just be themselves and students just have very intimate conversations about how to relate to one another and how to relieve themselves when our anger versus uh, the first reaction being fighting. The purpose of, the, of this morning circle is really to kind of amplify your voices. It's going to be a time for the adults in the room to hear a little bit from you all about what's something hard about your life that you would like the adults in your life to know about and understand a little bit better. One thing is hard is like trying to explain to your, explain yourself to adults because they think you're talking back or you know you're trying to get beside yourself, you're trying to act grown, but you're really trying to tell them what you're going through or you're trying to like explain your emotions. Instead, it brings you down a little bit because you can't even, you know, get your feelings out because they think you're trying to get out of line. Something that was hard for me was just like building confidence because of years and years of people telling me, oh, you're you're fat, you're ugly, you're, you're this and that and stuff like that. So I just want to, you know, let people know I'm trying. Like confidence is real hard to gain, yeah. but um, you know I'm getting there. I'm facing the fact that I am beautiful within myself, mm -hmm. within my body, within my brain, and stuff like that. I just want them to realize that we are all trying. Like we have to try. One thing that you know we've seen up around our school community is this idea of Ubuntu. It says, I am because we are. There's a level of interconnectedness with everything that we do. We stand on the shoulders of giants that come before us, but we have a responsibility in this unity piece to make things better for the next generation that's coming up. So again, when I think about it, there's an interconnectedness in this youth city community period, um, that we have a bigger responsibility, um, you know, to go ahead and be great, to go to CMO and do the things that we do. You know what I mean? Like there's a big responsibility on our shoulders. So um, again, the connection is with all of us. We all have our individual stories, um, but it feeds into a greater good. And again, I look at you guys as being that next generation, those leaders, um, you guys are doing this restorative work for a purpose, right? And that is to create leaders who as Mr. Morris talking about head and heart, they have the IQ and EQ balance. You know what I mean? That you can make decisions with your head. You can follow your heart and trust it and know that I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do whatever I need to do to make this better for me and mine, but also for this greater communities. Our students all come from different walks of life. Our students deal with different things every day. So it's important that we give them the opportunity to help them change through their experiences. For my students, it's made them trust the teacher community more. It's made them trust me more. But also it, it gives them someone that they can lean on to know that there's somebody here for them. In my role as principal at the University City High School, uh, over the past four years, I've watched our school culture, student behavior, and adult staff culture of interactions transform through the use of restorative practices. The support that has come from Project Restore um, devoted to the support of the class of 2023 specifically um, has been amazing. Uh, we've been the fortunate recipient of guest speakers, uh, Karan Bolden, the t-shirts, and several other um, actions that have been in place to support the students in their restorative journey and help to build community amongst our student body and impact the culture in our building. It helps my emotional side, you know, like expressing how I feel to like my, um, my teacher, like my classmates, I was never the type of person to like express my emotions out. I was a person that was, you know, didn't care about nothing. I was always a high head and it just makes me think differently. It's a common class. You get to share what you want to share, feel how you want to feel. How I dealt with things before the class, it was mainly anger. That was part of 
Part of the reason why I picked up football when I was younger too, it was just mainly anger. I didn't know how to feel about things, so it made me mad. So like, I'd probably hit on things, punch something, or go to football practice. Even though I played the offense at the time, I'd just go randomly hit somebody at practice. With the class, it taught me like, that I could actually talk about how I feel or like talk to someone. And like, if I could help other people out, it would make me feel better because I'm fixing their problems. I'm still having my own things going on. I lost my mom and my sister at a very young age. I was only 16, so um, it was difficult for me to, you know, finally cope, you know, especially growing up still. And it really helped me, you know, open up and, you know, be more atone with my emotions. It's been a hard time, but with, you know, the teachers and the people, you know, in restorative justice, it just helps a lot. You know, it might seem like I'm in a class with a bunch of people I don't know and it's awkward, but as soon as you get comfortable and warm to it, it's pretty, pretty helpful. I enjoy it wholeheartedly. The Police Athletic League, uh, what we do, we put on sports and activities for youth within the community um, at no cost. Our goal is to build positive relationships between law enforcement kids in the community. We're trying to make a change one relationship at a time. So the kids were a little edgy about wanting to be around policemen, regardless of race. They just wasn't feeling the police at the time. So uh, quite naturally, the program came together. And they warmed up to us as we warmed up to them. It was like we didn't know them, they didn't know us. So we treated each other different for that reason. But as we got to know each other, quite naturally, the relationship changes. Well, I tell you, it was, uh, it was exciting for me. Uh, especially uh, I took it personal because coming from a single home and, and not having the ability to participate in programming myself as a young man and looking forward to reaching out to children, telling them my story, you know, I was excited, truly excited. Uh, some of the highlights for me were the field trips, being that some of the kids have never been places or out of the area, they were able to go to like Mizzou football game, SLU basketball games, civil rights museums, and sometimes just going to the zoo. I know they went to the zoo, but they never got a chance to go to the zoo with the police. Where, they, you know, we walk and talk, walk and talk, and get a different perspective. And that's how our relationship kind of got better. The Restore Grant gave us the ability to do things with these kids that we, much less them, ever dreamt that we'd be able to do with them. We took them to Disney World last year, and we anything you could think of to interact and, and have new experiences with, we were able to do because of Restore. The greatest challenge and experience was getting through COVID together as a team. During COVID, we created a whole facility just for the kids. We gave them education, we fed them, entertained them, gave them social experiences they wouldn't have without us. And it was rewarding, challenging, and a great time. My most enjoyable moments with Powell would probably, probably be coming to the office every day during the virtual learning because they actually helped me get through my schoolwork and they helped me like maintain the social aspect of school while everybody was stuck at home. Back when I was in care, I had this police officer there to come pick me up, take me out for lunch. You know, some of them are not out really to hurt you, you know. A lot of them just want to help you. And I'm not really embarrassed to say that uh, I live with one or that I'm, you know, I have a relationship with one because so as some people don't know, you know, a police officer changed my life. I had pressure put on me, you know, with not having, you know, my mom at the house and just trying to watch my little brothers and sisters and everything. We didn't have a lot of food. Things got worse, you know, I was arguing with my mom. She was fighting with her, you know, her so-called to be loved one. And, you know, it just got bad. I run away. I, will, I won't come home for like a week. I stayed with him when he first got removed from his home. He got placed in a kinship um, situation. And I, he would come stay with us on the weekends to kind of give his um, foster parents a break. And he became part of our family. Unfortunately, um, that person, the kinship relationship, he passed away from COVID. And this was just another tragic incident in this child's life, just to add on to all the ones that he had had. And I said, oh, you're coming to our house. Coming here, it was a safe spot, you know, 
Before they came along, I didn't believe in myself. I really didn't believe in myself. And they'd tell me every day, hey, you're handsome, you're smart, you're intelligent, you got it. Thanks for making me, you know, motivate and push myself to get to where, I, where I'm at now. I'm going to go play football at Missouri Valley College. I just graduated from uh, Francis Howard Central. Kind of undecided what I want to study right now in my degree, but that will come along. But that's where I'm going to further my education at and uh, get back on the field. We, I don't think in the very beginning, thought through the, the four years and ending at their sophomore year that we were going to be okay with that. And, and our, we just weren't, it was not even in our minds, even though that's our purpose, is to establish these relationships. It wasn't even in our minds that we were going to have established these relationships and then say goodbye. So that is off the table. That is not even a possibility. Every one of these children have impacted us. So these kids will be with us forever. So as they're turning 18, as they're going off to college, as some of them are staying here in St. Louis, our goal is to keep them involved. So we're not letting them go. This, this four-year program became a lifetime program.